Hey guys, Jenna here, and I'm back again with another tour for you. As many of you know, I am really into renovated RVs and campers. I even renovated one myself recently. But in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how one couple took something that looks like a regular RV on the outside and made something absolutely spectacular on the inside. So without further ado, let's take a tour. I'm Shelby, this is my husband Rooster, and this is our RV Louise. new to the tiny living game. We got married in 2015 and right away moved onto a boat that was actually smaller than the RV. So this for us feels more homey than some of the other places we've lived. So Rooster is in the military and I am an online ESL teacher. So this lifestyle really works for us because I don't have to quit my job and start all over again every time we move somewhere. Um, and as long as there's Wi-Fi, I can work. So we were pretty transient with the military for the first three years of our marriage. We spent the majority of our marriage actually living separately in different cities, states, sometimes countries. And so the RV was really the only solution for us to stay together under the same roof for the first time in a year almost. Because we were moving so often, we didn't own furniture. We would just take a bed with us everywhere we went. So the RV is the first time we've owned a kitchen table in three years. So for us, it was nice to finally have a place to really call home. So right when we got the RV, we just pretty much completely overhauled it and made it our own. I grew up working with my dad, who's a carpenter, and so learned a little bit here and there. We had these big old built-in ugly recliners back here. We actually had overhanging cabinets that we tore out. A lot of stuff in here has been a lot harder than it should have been because not having a table saw or can't have a whole garage full of stuff and, and this thing, that's definitely made it a little bit more difficult. So my style is a little more eclectic and bohemian, but when we found out we were moving to California, I definitely went with, with, with a more surf shack interior design. I didn't realize how much of a creative outlet this was going to be for me, so it's been really fun for me just to challenge myself creatively and learn that you don't have to be a professional at something. If you have something in your heart that you want to do, you should just go for it. I think my favorite part is the daybed area. It's just very unique to us in our home, and it was like the first area that I stepped back after all the blood, sweat, and tears, and was like, ah, this is it. So I think my favorite part is just being able to pack up and you know, be right next to the beach one day or be overlooking the lake the next day. With him being military and us living separately for so long, it's nice to finally live under the same roof together. Sometimes we'll complain about little things and we'll remind each other, like, remember why we're doing this? I think that we also learn to just live with less. You don't need what you think you need. Welcome to Louise. Come on in. So this is our kitchen. Here we had a full-size fridge originally, but it broke. And so instead of going with a RV fridge, which costs about $1,000 to $2,000, we went residential. And just for the two of us, the mini fridge works perfectly. There's enough space in there. I grocery shop maybe twice a week. Over here is our food pantry. Over here, there was originally a microwave with a very large vent around it. Uh, we took out the vent and realized that there was a lot of space back there that was being wasted. So we kind of just redid it into a new cabinet and it's kind of our catch-all. There used to be overhead cabinets that extended out into the living room. It was really just kind of an eyesore. Blocked off light, so we took those out and used open shelving. Over here is where I do all the dishes. Uh, we don't have a dishwasher, so I just extend this out and do the dishes by hand. So this is our dining room, and as you go throughout the home, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff that we have in here has been DIY'd or thrifted. This is a hat that I thrifted for $5, turned upside down and strung a light through. Over here, these curtains I made out of Turkish towels and a bamboo rod. My husband made the bench himself for about $30, and the table was free, so pretty inexpensive living area. Over here is our living room area. We 
hung up our surfboard using bamboo and twine. So bamboo was a big component in building with the RV beach just because it's so cheap. Underneath here we have extra storage. You can see a cat door. There's a section here for her litter box. In the center there's a section for her safe place when we're moving the RV. I'm a huge thrifter and so I actually change out the decor up there quite often. For instance, the radio came from the National Flea Market. The steer head, as you can see, has been broken several times and glued back together. I just love it. I think it's a little piece of eclectic rustic charm. We're from Kansas, so that just kind of reminds me of home. So the coffee table is one piece in the RV that's kind of an unnecessary item. We don't really use it for anything. We just love the aesthetic of it. We thrifted it in Virginia Beach and we just couldn't let it go. So it's just one of those pieces that we hung on to even though it didn't have a functional purpose for the RV, we just couldn't bring ourselves to let it go. So one of the other requirements for the RV when we were looking was that it must have a work area or a desk for me since I teach online. All I do is I put up a little trifold poster with visual aids behind me and this turns into my virtual classroom. One of the things I like about having my own desk area over here is that it's the one place in the RV that is all mine. It belongs entirely to me. So what you see over here is a lot of me. Rocks and gems and air plants and seashells. It's all just kind of a wild mix of all the things I find and love. It was really important to me to have my own space in here that way. When I'm at work, I'm at work, and when I'm at home, I'm at home. Over here is our coffee bar in very close proximity to my desk, you'll notice. This actually was supposed to be torn out. We just didn't have time for it, so it was left as is. Nobody owns a box TV in 2019. So kind of cool, my hubby built these little storage spaces inside the uh, stairs for us to keep our shoes. So that's super convenient. Over here we have a little closet where we can keep our broom, our keys, and it has all of our electrical system and it tells us our tanks, if they're full or empty. Behind this curtain here we have our shower and up here is our bedroom. All right, this is our bed, and underneath there is some additional stores where we keep our winter clothes. Our headboard we made out of faux shiplap. We actually had a painter come in and give us an estimate for them to paint because we realized we were running low on time for renovations, and he quoted us $3,000 to paint the RV. Instead of doing that, we put the shiplap up to cover the wallpaper since it couldn't be painted at a cheaper price. Here we have some shutters covering our windows. We made that out of just one long shutter. We cut it in half and split it between the two windows. Over here, we have some additional storage for clothes. We have a dresser, so pretty decent amount of storage in here. Up here is where I keep all of my hair and makeup. This is my husband's catch-all. This is our little toilet room. Not a lot of privacy in the RV but it gets the job done. So we have a normal working RV toilet. We also have our little letter board in here and it usually has something that references using the bathroom. <laughs> We're hoping to conceive within the next year, so fingers crossed. If that happens, this space is going to need to function much differently with a baby. So what that might look like for us is ripping out this nightstand over here, centering the bed more in the bedroom, that way we can walk around the bed, lifting the bed up to create more storage underneath, and then, um, this might sound weird, but we're going to put the baby in the closet. <laughs> this half will remain closet area. You can go back there and get some shoes. Over here is washer dryer hookup. We actually don't have a washer dryer right now because we don't need it with the two of us, but with a baby we would definitely consider getting a washer dryer. So then this half of the closet would be completely torn out. There'd be a crib in there, changing station. Right now, this is my half of the closet and this is my husband's half of the closet. So we will definitely have to consolidate some of our clothing. Um, I'll have to donate a lot of my shoes, <laughs> but we plan to just make that work by donating a lot of our clothes and adding more storage under the bed for other storage for clothing. And that half will become the baby's section. I really don't foresee it being too much different than what it is now living with a baby in the RV. We have always kind of gotten by on with less and our child will probably grow up with those with the same standards of you don't need all the unnecess unnecessary things that society tells you that you need today.
military relationships, you kind of see the reunion videos on Instagram and Facebook and what you don't see is what happens when you go home after the reunion and you have to always find a new normal when they're leaving and coming and leaving and coming. And so for us, having the RV and having a sense of that normalcy and having a home helped keep our marriage rooted. And so for that reason, it's been a real blessing on our marriage. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and ring that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video.